Hey guys, how you doing? Um, recently we had a super blue blood moon here in um, Australia and unfortunately in South Australia um, I couldn't go out and, sh and photograph it because it was extremely cloudy um, but uh, two days have passed since then and we've had clear skies so I thought I'd go out there and I'd uh, take a few photos of the moon it's not something I do a great deal of um, however I posted my image up on Instagram and um, you got a little bit of attention so I figured I'd do this little uh, guide on how I um, the steps I went through processing the image now I'm using a uh, program here called Registax the reason I've uh, well actually it's been a long time since I've used Registax I used to use this program when I was um, photographing uh, planets and the reason um, we use programs like Registax to process uh, planetary imaging is that you're usually uh, recording an image of um, of a planet through a telescope and uh, using high um, frame rate and then the uh, Registax program will break down um, that video into individual frames and then you'll start picking out the best um, images throughout that um, throughout all those uh, you know the length, the duration of the recording as such um, what this does is because you're using a, a high um, magnification uh, you get a thing called um, atmospheric turbulence so the images can look a bit blurry um, and then you might get a little bit of um, all of a sudden the, the atmospheric turbulence might die down slow down and or a bit of a break as such and you'll get a real nice clear image so that's basically why um, we use programs like Registax to um, bring uh, to stack those moments of clear seeing uh, images together to create a, a sharp and detailed image overall um, hope some of that made sense I was, I was rambling a bit there but uh, let, let's go on to the uh, the moon shop Okay, so eight images here of the moon. I don't want to stretch my intensity levels. Okay, and all I'm going to do is click on set align points. Now, this image here was taken with a Nikon D810A with a Nikon AFS 300mm f2.8 lens with a 2 times tele converter on it so it gave me a 600 mil f5.6 um, focal length and then I uh, changed my aperture to f8 um, the image was a uh, uh, exposure was 1 250th of a second and um, the reason it was uh, around that exposure is because I wanted to try and keep it um, keep the shutter speed quick to reduce the blur and try and keep the sharpness in the image uh, shooting at f8 uh, I then um, took my images into Lightroom and uh, cropped down the image overall um, because Registax doesn't like big files uh, I then exported all those images into a TIFF and um, here they are right now so I've just imported the uh, eight images I've just set all my um, align points and now I'm going to go from uh, move my align points to the strongest okay um, I'm picking the strongest because um, uh, instead of having a whole bunch of align points all over the place um, I just want my strongest um, align points between each image um, so I can stack it um, align and stack it uh, you know, really well um, best frame percentage now I'm only using 8 so I might push this up to the, the standard of 80 um, and just leave it at that the more images you add uh, the more you can be fussy about um, a percentage of the best images um, throughout the night because as I said with each image you're going to have um, atmospheric turbulence and um, reducing the amount of images with atmospheric turbulence in your stack is going to re 
uh, increase the amount of detail and sharpness of an image. So once I've done that I'm just going to hit align and it's just going to quickly run through the um, procedure of aligning each, uh, each um, image up and as you can see it's going to use seven of eight images to um, to stack. Okay, that there's basically showing the uh, motion of the moon throughout each image. Um, and again, if you've got a lot of images, you're going to get a lot more movement between um, stacked images. So um, sometimes it pays to have a tracking mount to, to track, so that way you're not getting a lot of movement and you can probably add even more images um, to your stack that way too. So all I'm going to do is uh, click stack let it run through its um, its processing and hopefully with the recording of the video it you know it doesn't bug out or um, lock up or anything like that which it has done in the past cool that's pretty quick so it's just finished doing all the stack next thing I'm going to go do is uh, do a little bit of um, processing with it in Registacks. Now I can't remember everything I used to do in Registacks. It was about four years ago when I was doing some planetary um, photography, as such. Uh, however, one of the first things I do is adjust my um, uh, red, green, blue, or my channel balance, just simply by doing that. And as you can see here this here is my processing area so it's only going to be showing me any effects I make any changes sorry I make it's only going to be showing me in that one little panel there and I'm going to move this panel more towards the top section of the of the moon here and next thing I'm going to do is just unclick all my layers but one and I slide it up to about 30, 40, and as you can see it's making a little bit of a difference. Alright, but I want to increase that detail a little bit more, so I increase the sharpness of it. However, increasing sharpness I'm going to introduce more noise. So this is basically what the denoise does, is it tries to reduce the amount of noise as you're sharpening your image. So I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And I'm going to increase the sharpness of my image. And as you can see, I'm increasing a lot more detail on the moon's surface, but I'm getting more noise. So I want to denoise it a bit, but at the same time, increase and denoise until I find something that I'm, yeah, happy with. And for this, you know, I'm, that will do. I'm I'm happy with that. Okay. Once I've just done those two little things, I mean, there's other things you can do. Um, you know, you can adjust your contrast brightness and and whatnot. But I'm going to do all that in uh, Lightroom anyway. So I'm just going to click Do All. It's going to apply um, all my changes to the whole image, and we'll wait for that to happen. Okay, once that's done, I'm just going to click Save Image here, and I'm going to just save it in that folder there. And now I'm done, and that's it. So I'm going to close that down, and I'm going to open up Lightroom first. Okay, now this is one of the problems I had with um, saving files as a TIFF with Registax is that when I wanted to import it straight into Lightroom, I come up with this problem here. The way I overcome this was I opened it up into Photoshop first. And then I saved it as, and I just... just resaved it again basically and now here it is
and develop. So now we can just, you know, give it a little bit of a process if we wish. Um, we can bump up the uh, the saturation in the image to try and come out with some of the moon's uh, colours, mineral makeups. Um, add some contrast. And all I'm really doing here is just stretching out my histogram here. And as you can see by adding a bit of vibrance and saturation, I'm starting to get some of the colours from the moon as well. Um, and, you know, it's up to you and whether you want to add a bit, bit of clarity or however you want to process your image. But, um, you know, what, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And, uh, and I hope this guide has helped you out a little bit in how to stack moonshots and, um, and use Registacks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll um, try my best to answer them. However, my knowledge in Registax is very limited these days, um, so I'm not too sure how much more help I can be. Okay. Good luck, guys.